You can take off. You guys want to use 2-4, I can sit around and land on 2-4, that's fine. Yeah, that's much appreciated. We've got uh, two other airplanes behind us down here lined up at 2-4. Fine, go ahead and 2-4, go ahead and set up for 2-4, it's got us 66. Cool, thank you, sir. All right, let's get on the center line, feet off of the brakes. Um, so we're gonna go to full power. As we add it in, you're gonna need a little bit of right rudder. You'll start feeling it. Hold us on that center line stripe. I want you to imagine that center line goes through your shoulder. All right, so yeah, let's try to get over to it, to the right some. There we go. All right, there's 55, so just slight pitch up. There you go. All right, and now just glancing inside, you can see that speed accelerating and looking outside. Yeah, this is much better. A little bit less right rudder. A little bit less right rudder. Over like Macintosh, break off, and I will turn into a left down one runway 2-4 to follow the other traffic. There you go. I think you're pressing left pedal. You're not pressing, right. yeah. You want right rudder. Right rudder. Right yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, push on the right side. You feel my foot pushing there? But you always got to step on the ball on the kilometer. Okay, I see your Pilatus traffic is from us. So you see why we're always looking outside? Uh -huh. You can see him. He's going to cross the front of our nose. But let's just continue our climb straight out here. I feel like the traffic here for Yankee. I'm going to run with you for Pilatus traffic in sight. Yeah, I got you in sight too. Pilatus traffic will be left down with two four four five. Okay, so we're watching him clear off of our left here. Looks like the clouds are about to find a hole to get up on top of him. Let's go ahead and make our left turn out on crosswind here. And going to traffic 9422, departing 24, I have both air traffic, aircraft in sight.
turns first. We're going to clear the area. Okay. Clear each turn. Let's do a right turn to west. Okay. 4,000 feet while we do it. All right, so I'm keeping the same power. That's correct. You can take your hand off the throttle. Fly the airplane with one hand, though. Keep that other hand available to do other things that you need it to do. And you'll fly the airplane a lot more sensitively with one hand. Yeah, if you see the nose up just a little bit, or right. gain an altitude, yep. Remember, just hold that nose level across the horizon as we turn. All right, let's turn back to the south now. There's two 90-degree turns. That's what the FAA requires clearing turn-wise. We can always do more than that if we need to, but what we're doing is looking for airplanes, traffic, obstructions, mountains, birds, whatever, uh, to make sure as we do our maneuvers that we don't impact anything. All right, that was really good. Yes. Okay, let's do a 180 degree turn now. We'll get a little bit more warmed up here, so let's hold 4,000 feet while we do that. Let's go to the right. All right. Yeah, and as you're doing this, get familiar with the... Uh, let's turn a little bit less steep. That's a steep yeah. turn right there. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, just about 30 degrees. And, right. um Look for airplanes and birds and, and stuff as we look, because that's what one of the purpose of us doing these clearing turns is. Keep that turn coming a little bit more. We're almost there. We're about, we want to come all the way to yeah. north. Yeah. There we go. Guess I missed it. Make another adjust. Yeah, let's just send back down to 4,000 feet on the heading of north now. There you go. That's looking good, but you see as we accelerate it, the nose is going to want to come back up. you got to hold it where you want it for a second. Right, right, right. Yeah. Alright, so, what we are going to do is get the airplane into slow flight. Alright, All right, so to do that, we're going to set it up just like we do when we're landing. The power goes to 1500 RPM. Right now? Uh, we're, we're just going to talk to it first. The okay. power goes to 1500 RPM. As the airplane slows down, we're going to add in full flaps. We're going to do this while we maintain 4,000 feet. What's going to happen is the airplane's going to start slowing down, and to maintain 4,000 feet, you're going to notice that you're going to have to hold the nose up higher and higher and higher. And as you do that, to hold that altitude, we're going to have to add in power so that the airplane will actually hold the altitude. As we increase the amount of lift, it's going to take more and more and more power to actually hold 4,000 feet as we slow down. We're basically trading off our airspeed for altitude in that case. All right, so we're going to fly it together the first time and hold a heading of north as we do it. So I want you to pull the power back to 1,500 RPM first. So go ahead and reduce the power to 1,500 RPM. All right, so immediately we want to hold 4,000 feet. We're going to get level here at 4,000 feet. So you're going to notice something. As it slows down, look what's happened to happen to the nose. It's going higher and higher, right? Right. Okay, we're in the wide arc. Let's add in full flaps. Full, full flaps? Full all flaps. the way? Yep, All the way out? Yep. All right, so the airplane's going to slow down here. You can feel what the effect yeah. of those flaps as they come out. All right, and as the airplane slows down a little bit more and more, we're having to pull that nose higher and higher. Let's start adding in power now. Gotcha. Yep. You're going to need a lot of right, right, come on with some more power. It's going to take a decent amount. Go ahead and push it a lot in. Uh, all the way to... It's There's no specific setting. Go ahead and give me all the way to about the bottom of the green arc, just for a starting point. How about that? See, right rudder, yeah. Yeah, right rudder's going to be needed because we're at a high angle of attack. That, uh -huh. All right, and we're just going to kind of hold the airplane level at 4,000 feet. You see the nose is up yeah, now, but we're still up. holding level. I see. Yeah. You ever seen a boat going down a lake really slow and it's just like the nose is way out of the water right. as it kind of rides on top of it? That's almost kind of what we're doing right now. Similar, similar viewpoint, different concept, but...
but we're keeping altitude. That's correct. I want you to see what happens now if we add power. So go ahead and add full power in. Watch what happens. We're going to start climbing. Right. So we're using we're our power for altitude. So if we're ever low, you can see that we can actually add in power to help us climb. But as we add full power in, you'll also notice that uh, we have to add in more right rudder. Now you hear that stall horn going off? Yeah. That's the stall horn. Uh, oh, anytime it comes on, we want to listen to it. We're right at that angle of attack where we're very right. close I see. to the critical angle of attack, right. which is where that airplane's wing will yeah. stop producing as much lift as it's right. producing right now. I can barely hear it, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty quiet. It actually might be gummed up with a few bugs. We'll have to clean it out. But okay. um, what we're going to do, though, is we want to fly right above that speed. So we don't want to fly with that constantly on, but we can actually use our pitch to control the speed. So watch right. what happens if you pitch the nose down slightly. You'll notice Going the airspeed starts to speed up, right? Right. So but as we pitch the nose higher uh, up, three, two, eight, at the, mag hangar, the airspeed starts eight, to right, immediately right, slow right. back down so again. So you can see how you're going to control. With the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Pitch. Right. Speed. Exactly. Let's do a descent now in slow flight. So I want you to pull the power once again for 1500 RPM. The airplane, you can immediate, immediately feel it starts to want to sink a little bit, right? right. So we're just going to let the airplane sink back down to 4,000 feet. All right. Good. 4,000 feet. So I'll just sort of let it, let it descend. Yeah, just let it sink slightly. Yep. There you go. Because if I let the yoke go, it's the nose wants to come down, too, right? Too fast. Yeah, too fast. So we just kind of hold it almost level, right? Okay. So now you can see that where level flight normally is when so we, do, we have the flaps up is about two, two, a sinking two, flight four, when we're in two, slow two, flight here. Alpha back to two, four. Gotcha. Okay, so once we get to 4,000, we'll have to throttle back up to right around 1,900 to 2,000 RPM to hold level again. All right, so there we go. So we'll pitch power and trim basically in slow flight now. So power back as we pitch up just slightly above the horizon. There we go. And let's try to hold 4,000 feet. Now that you know what the effect of that power is and the effect of that pitch is, I want you to hold 4,000 feet in slow flight on this heading in north. Heading north, 4,000. Yeah, you're doing great so far. Now, um, one of the new rule changes that happened in June is that anytime we hear the stall horn in slow flight, we uh -huh. must physically announce stall horn, and we must lower the nose to, to make the stall horn go off, basically. Once again, it only comes on if we're getting close to that critical angle of attack, so the FAA found that a lot of students were being trained to ignore it. Because back in the day, we were taught to fly with it on the whole time. Basically fly it as slow as you can fly it, which this airplane will do it. But now they want us to announce stall horn, and they want to fly us just above that stall horn coming on. Okay. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to do a couple turns in slow flight. The first turn we're going to do is going to left turn to the south. You're going to notice something. The controls are going to feel really sloppy. If you, I've got the controls for a second here. Okay. You'll notice I can do this with the flight controls and this, right. and there's not much effect on the airplane. Yes. The reason is there's less airflow over the control surfaces in right. total because we're going so slow, so they don't have as much authority. Response, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to feel kind of sloppy. The second thing is we don't want to use very much bank angle in slow flight. I see. The reason is, is as we increase the bank angle, our stall speed also increases. And because we're already so close to our VSO stall speed there, we don't want to increase it anymore by putting it in a 30 degree bank. So we're going to use just about 10 degrees of bank or so. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do a turn to the south. To the south, all right. We'll do a left turn. And let's hold 4,000 feet while we do it. If you notice you're going a little too high, you can pull power out. A little bit less bank than that, about 10 degrees of bank, right around there. Let's pull some power out, we're climbing too much. I see how to power. Yeah. Let's keep, yeah, keep coming it to the left. There you go. Yeah, it's a very different type of turn. It is. It's a very slow, gentle turn. And 10 degrees, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like the traffic to the five there, they're pretty anxious. We're about six miles. Alright. 
miles in. Heading south. Sure thing. Let's do a right turn now. I want you to do what it's like to the right. Sure. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. All right, here we go. Any questions or thoughts so far about it? Um, no, I'm trying to use it as much visual as I can. Yeah, fly, but you uh, can see the nose is a lot higher. It looks like we're climbing in these turns, doesn't it? But we're not. We're actually holding level. Right. You can see vertical speed is dead on zero. You're doing great. Actually, a lot easier to keep altitude while turning, I think. Okay. Slow speed. It okay, to yeah. Me, it seems like. Yeah, it could be perceived that way. As we're going faster, basically, we're going to divert from our altitude more quickly because we're going... You hear that stall horn coming on? Yeah. Let's say stall horn and let's lower the nose some. You'll hear the stall horn go away when we do that. We're reducing the angle of attack and we're about to apply that here in a second when we actually fly the stalls. Well, you can see as we pitch up more and more you'll hear it come on. Take the first notch out immediately. And 
then the second two can come as we accelerate into our normal 80 knot climb again. Okay. Yep. You see how we recovered from that situation? Yeah, I forgot the flaps were all the, all the way retracted. So. Yep. We'll go all the way up with our last one there. Okay. okay, and we're back to a normal cruise flight. Right. All right, we're going to set that one up again. Let's pull the, go to the power to 15 again. We're going to come back to our heading south here. As we slow down, let's add in the full flaps. You can go ahead and go full flaps. Yep. All right, so we're getting back into slow flight again. As we slow down, let's add that power back in so that we can maintain level flight. All right, we're right back to slow flight where we started, right? Right. A little bit more power. Hold us level. And hold that heading of south for me. It's kind of hard today because we don't really have good visual points on the ground it's all white, necessarily yeah. to uh, hold a reference point. Hear the star horn? Lower that nose some. Anytime you hear that stall horn, your yeah. first reaction should be to say stall horn and lower that nose. I need to get familiar with that song because I barely yeah. hear it. Yeah, it's, it might be kind of gummed up. I'll have to look at it and make sure we get it cleaned up. the left some, just about one five zero. A little bit more power is going to help you hold level. You see we're slowly sinking? Yeah. Remember, let's, add, right. let's add power in and that'll get us our altitude back. So yeah. uncomfortable for a few minutes, yeah. Yeah, add that power back in. Yeah, come up with a, a, a decent amount. Remember power for altitude? Go ahead and hump that power in there pretty good. A little bit more, more power. Well, above that, yeah, we want to climb. 2,000, 1,900 is going to hold us about level in this airplane. Okay. We want full power. Are we are keeping at 4,000 or? Yeah, we're going to climb back up. You hear the stall horn? Yeah. Lower the nose, say stall horn. Full power will help you climb at a better angle of attack here. We're, we're climbing to? Yeah, 4,000. See, we sunk 4, down to 3,700. Okay. Yeah, we want to get back up to 4,000. That's right, okay. There we go. Let's do one notch of flaps coming out. Let's climb a little bit less steep. 
deep, we gotta build some right. momentum first. We're still right. really slow. Really slow, yeah. Yeah. So that first notch comes out as we start to accelerate. Now we can take the next two notches out. So one at a time, the 10 okay. degrees. There we go. And then as we accelerate a little more, now we can do one more notch. You see how we recovered and now we're back flying and climbing again? Right. Yeah, so that's how we recover from the stall. We okay. have to lower the angle of attack. We have to lower that nose. Now here's the reason it's so counterintuitive. We're practicing this at 4,000 feet. When we're on landing, we're only a couple hundred feet above the ground, right? It's counterintuitive for the pilot to want to lower the nose towards the ground first. Pilots want to do this. They want to pull, 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 make the ground go away, right? right. But what that does is it only puts us deeper and deeper into the stall. We're not going to fly that way. We have to lower the nose and add full power first, even if we're only 100 feet above the ground. That's the only chance we have at regaining control of the airplane and flying away. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how we can do that with full power as well. So what we're going to do here, we're not going to get the slow flight this time. We're actually going to, and I'm going to take the power here and the flight control to demonstrate this one first. I'm going to pull the power to 15 and just slow the airplane down first to about takeoff speed, which is 55 knots. And I'm going to add full power in and pitch the nose up too steeply. And what we're about to enter is what's an imminent power on stall, so stalling with full power. So as we slow down, you see I have to trade the airspeed for altitude, so I'm slowing down, I'm pitching the nose higher and higher to slow down more and more. You see that as, it, as we slow down, the nose is getting higher and higher? Right. But we're maintaining the same altitude? Yes. So there's 55. Let's imagine we just took off. We're climbing out. I hear the stall horn. Yes. All right, you'll start to feel a buffeting here in a second. Right. So to recover from that situation, I'm lowering the nose that angle of attack and now I'm going to re-pitch the airplane for its appropriate climb speed of about 80 knots. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. If we take off and we pitch up too high, then what's going to happen is, I'm going to look, uh, get us back down to 4,000 feet. Sure. What's going to happen is, is we're going to exceed that critical angle of attack and we're going to um, possibly stall the airplane right above the runway. So let's fly it together this time. So we're going to slow it down, we'll see the power where it is, and slow it down to, to uh, 55 knots here. So we're trading off airspeed for altitude. So, we're pulling back here. Yep, slowly more and more. Okay, let's add full power and right rudder. Alright, okay, here's the stall horn. Let's keep pitching up. I want you to feel what it feels like here. You feel it just started to get really nose high? It's starting to bump yep. it a little bit? Let's lower that nose. Now we, you hear the stall horn go away, so the angle of attack is happy now. The airplane is accelerating, so let's start to climb again. So what we're simulating is taking off way too steep. Alright, let's go ahead and pull that power back again some. we we'll practice that one one more time. Sure. So this is the power on stall. We're not to the full stall today, we're just to the imminent stall. Alright, so let's pull that power back a little bit more to 15. I want you to trade off the airspeed for the altitude here. So as it slows down, we're just slowly pitching the nose back more and more to help it slow. Alright, and let's try to hold a heading of south while we do this. Alright, so keep pitching back just a little bit slower. Yep, level the wings. Use yeah. your, oh, your visual. Yep. Good first, yeah. Okay, I hear the stall horn already. Let's go full power. All right, start pitching that nose up like you're pitching up too I'll steeply. Yeah. yeah, so you hear the stall horn coming on. All right, let's pitch it up a little more. All right, we're climbing out way too steep. There's the stall horn. It's starting to bump it some, so let's lower that nose. The one thing I noticed, we need to maintain coordination in that a lot better. Alright, let's go ahead and level out here. Alright, so... Alright, I've got the flight controls. Alright, so I'm going to demonstrate something here. This is called spin awareness, basically. I'm not going to fly a maneuver, but... Um, what I just mentioned was that we weren't coordinated. I want you to understand the danger of not being coordinated when we get close to stalling the airplane. So remember the other day we were practicing with the rudders? If I push the left rudder pedal, it raises up the right wing and the left wing drops. And if I push the opposite rudder pedal, the opposite thing happens. And what's happening here is we're basically putting one wing in front of the other wing, so 
so that wing is creating slightly more lift than that wing, so it raises that wing up, right? Yes. All right, so now imagine that we're in the stall situation, and one wing is creating slightly more lift than the other wing. What do you think would happen in that situation if we flew into the stall? Yeah, and yoke forward. forward. Alright, that took us away from 
from that situation, right? Okay. Alright, let's practice it again. So let's uh, come back to normal power again, like if we're in a cruise. Alright, let's do one like we're in a right turn this time. Alright, so we're getting close to that angle of attack. We're uncoordinated. You can see the ball is outside right. of the heart. Okay. There. Alright, so let's practice it together. So first step. Pray, uh, yeah. Power idle. Uh, idle. Opposite rudder. So rudder. Aileron's neutral. Neutral. And yoke forward. Alright, that took us out of that situation, right? Gotcha, okay. Alright, let's do one more to the left. Alright, let's come back to power here. Yeah, once the airplane is back to level, you can come off of the rudders at that point. Just enough to hold it coordinated at that I point. See. Yeah. Alright, we'll practice it one more can time. Can you sit one more time? The rudders, you can let go of the rudders one. Yeah, so, like, say for instance, if it's going left, yeah. I want you to hold that rudder down until you stop that spin straight, like oh. that, and then you can hold the airplane straight. But if we're going le left, right rudder, yes. until it's straight, and until then you can let go. Stop the spin, yeah, and then we can bring it back to level. Right, otherwise... We don't, we don't want to let go, we just want to hold it back to level. Oh, no, otherwise we'll create a new problem. We could, yeah, we might go the other way then. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. so, let's do it one more time. We'll do it like we're going to the left. Okay. Yeah, so we're... Okay, there's the danger situation, so power idle. Opposite rudder. Yep, aileron's neutral. And yoke forward. There we go, so we're out of that situation now. Okay. Alright, cool. Let's climb up back to 4,000 feet, that's good. So that's just spin awareness. We're going to practice that a lot more. I really want you, like, second nature to be able to recover from those situations. And... On top of that, to never fly yourself into that situation ever, so that you don't have to do that. But just in case you do, you can. You've got the guideline right there. P R A Y. P R A Y. All right, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna transition into our next segment here, which is instrument flight. Okay. All right. So before we do it, um, here's pitch. Yeah, sure. Pitch power should be 4,000 feet. Power. The power should be at. Just a, just a normal cruise, about 2300 RPM. Okay. I'm trying to not get an altitude here, so I'm going to have to pitch back. Yeah, you're going to have to hold that pitch where you want it first. Alright, so... That's it, pretty much. I have to pull back a little bit somehow. Well... You see, as we accelerate, that engine is spinning faster and faster, so you might have to pull a little bit of power out as we accelerate. Okay. Alright, hold that pitch down though. They were climbing. Oh, we are climbing, yeah. Yeah, you can see the nose is high too. There we go. It is a little difficult with these clouds for today. Traffic, Gamma Jet 512, Citation XL. We're currently 5 mile final runway 24. Alright, so I'm trying to spread that airplane or make sure it's adding the right cruising altitude. Yeah, I mean, yeah the attitude. Looks, like, looks like pretty good. I'm at 4,000. Might be going down. There you go. And I don't know. Yeah, it's, it looks pretty trim to you. Yeah, I mean, it feels pretty good to me. Okay, so we're going to transition to the next segment here. So here's the scenario. It's a day like today. You're up here by yourself. You're flying solo, right? You've, you've made me a happy flight instructor. And you kind of make a bad decision to decide to go flying on a day like today solo. And we're flying along. And we accidentally enter one of these clouds. What's immediately going to happen is we're going to lose all reference to visual flight. There's going to be no eyeball to know where blue is and where brown is, basically. The sky and the ground. There's going to be disorientation that happens because these semicircular canals in your ear, which are these little fluid sacs, basically, that tell you if your head is left, right, up, or down. If you lean, you can kind of feel yourself do it. They're going to start lying to you. So they're going to start whispering things to you like, hey, you're in a bank right now, when in, in fact you're straight and level. And that's not correct. So, in order to overcome that, we have these primary flying instruments here. The six-pack, as people call them, because it's like a six-pack of drinks, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to reference straight and level flight by these solely. We're not going to look outside. Now, this isn't normally how we're going to fly the airplane visually, but it will teach you what these flight instruments do and how they all correspond. Right. They all have multiple purposes. 
purposes. So we need to teach you how to scan though. It's hard to look at six things at once, so we need to break it down into an easy scan that we can focus on. And I want you to anchor it all off the attitude indicator. So the attitude indicator is a pitch instrument, so we can see it pitches up and down. Yep. But it's also a bank instrument. Bank. It tells us yep. left and right. Correct. So that's going to be your anchor. You're going to drop down to your directional gyro. Your directional gyro is a bank instrument. It can tell you if you're in a bank. You can notice right. if we're in a bank, it's going to move. Right. right? Yes. So we're going to want to hold a heading first. So we're going to hold a heading on west while we do this. You're going to come back up here. So we bounce, bounce. All right? We're going to bounce over to airspeed. Your airspeed is a pitch instrument. As we pitch the nose up, what happens to the airspeed? Right. It slows down. As we pitch forward, what's it do? It starts to increase. Your altimeter is also a pitch instrument. It's going to tell you if your pitch is up, you're going to climb. If it's down, you're going to descend. Right. So we're kind of doing a T shape. You see how that's in the shape of a T? Yes. Back and forth, just like that. Bouncing back and forth. And then every now and then you're going to add in these secondary instruments. Your vertical speed is a pitch instrument. It can tell you if you're pitching up or pitching down. Right. And your turn coordinator is a bank instrument. It can right. tell you if you're banking left or banking right. Yes. All right, so we're going to fly the airplane solely in reference to those. I want you to hold me on a heading of west okay. at 4,000 feet. I'm going to have the flight controls, so I have the flight controls first. I need you to put these view limiters on. It's going to limit your view from the outside. Sure. I want you to focus only on the flight instrument. I'm actually going to climb us up just a little bit here to get us above the top of some of these clouds here, too. So allow me to do that while you get those uh, bottles on there. Sure. how to do this at some point, but what I'm doing right now is leaning out the mixture. Um, since we're up at altitude right now, we don't need a full mixture flow to the engine because the air is less dense, so we can actually take some fuel away from the mixture, but so we'll talk about that in another lesson. Alright, so there's 4,500 feet. I'm going to pitch power and trim for you here, level at 4,005.
Let's bring that power back up to a normal cruise. Okay. Well, 23. Alright, let's practice a right turn now. Let's go to about a uh, 240. Alright. So, 30 degrees or 10? Uh, yeah, about, you can do it just right there in the middle. How about 15? Now, one thing I want you to get used to in these in the instrument turns, um, it's just not using so much bang angle. We actually have these tick marks on this turn coordinator here. Right. That are standard rate turns. And, and when you do your instrument rating, when you become an instrument pilot, you do most of your turns to the standard rate. And so a standard rate turn is a turn that gives you three degrees of turn per second. So three right. degrees. And so what that does is it gives us a nice, easy, gentle turn so that we don't get so disoriented as we turn. I see. Yeah, we can also use it to time the turns. If we turn three degrees per second, we can do a 360 in about two minutes. Two minutes. You can see there. I see. So if we lost, you know, vacuum and electrical failure or something like that, or, or just a vacuum failure, we could actually time our turns using that uh, two-minute mark. But we'll talk about that a lot more later. Thing. All right, I want you to know how to climb in sure. this situation. So let's say we needed to climb, like we descended into the top of the cloud, okay. and we want to climb back out of it. All right. So let's go full power, and I want you to climb on a heading of 240 up to 5,000 feet. Four zero, gotcha. Okay. Two four. Okay. Yeah. Two four zero. You can add a zero to everything. All right. On that. But because we don't have visuals and horizon anymore, then we're just using that. But uh, how about the critical angle of attack? I mean, I don't want to so go over five. Still, or so, so remember, it'll happen at any airspeed, right? So we really, we just don't want to use too much back pressure, and you know exceed the critical angle of attack. Remember, it has nothing to do really with the vertical speed or airspeed. It's all just about the angle. But like right now, I feel... Yeah, this is a nor this is a great climb. This is a good climb here. Okay. But there's no indicator that can tell me... There is. I... There's not an indicator on this airplane. There are some airplanes that have them. And the FAA is encouraging more and more pilots to install them. But uh, this airplane does not have an angle of attack indicator. Okay. All right, so let's level off at 5,000 feet. So pitch Sorry. power and trim. All right, pitch. Well, I should be a little bit firmer with the pitch. I'm kind of slow with my first pitch uh, adjustment, I think. Sure, so we'll set the power, power now. Gotcha, okay, here it feels really natural now. And pitch power trim. That's Again, correct. trimming is... Is uh, is uh, all right. right. Give me a turn to about a heading of north. All right. There we go. So the first dot is ten degrees. That's correct. Yep. And the second is 20. 20. Well, you're saying 10 degrees. Yeah, so that standard rate will change depending on how fast you're going. If we go faster, then it might be a little bit uh, more. As we go slower, it might be a little bit less. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, we also want to know how to descend if we don't. So let's say we climbed up into the bottom of some clouds and we want to come back out of them because yes. we, we underestimated the, the bottoms of them or something. So let's do a descent. Let's pull that power back for about 1,800 RPM and let's descend down to 4,500 feet. Uh, how much descent? 4,500? Yeah, down to about 4,500. Gotcha. And keep north? Uh, yeah, let's keep heading in north while we do that. Basically, as long as you hold that airspeed, you're going to keep that descent. All right. We're 
put it down on 4500. Yeah, let's level off now. Level off, so pitch is, uh, here we go. Yep, pitch, power, and trim. Pitch. And then power to 23. Yep, that's correct. Now keep your scan going, watch your heading there. Um, oh yeah, the north, you mean? Yep. So, so and I'm trying power to back up to uh, about 23, there you go. Oh, that's multitasking for me. Yeah, it is. It's teaching you. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get you'll get better with that as you get. Right. Just like a car. Yeah. yeah, it's the same. All right. And um, north. Um, pitch, power, and trim. I haven't done any trimming today, but I guess. Yeah, it felt pretty trimmed for this flight. Oh. All right. And um. Once we get to 4,500 feet, you can go ahead and pull the foggles off, and we're actually going to descend back down to Burlington. I want you to help me look as we come through this cloud layer here for airplanes and stuff. Sure. So you you tell me we're going to 4,500. So yeah, if you want to actually now, you can go ahead and pull that, uh, that those foggles off here. Okay. And what we're going to do, let's descend together. We're going to come down. Let's find a really good hole here. I think this one below is going to be our best one. And we're going to descend through this hole, basically. So you're uh, we're going to do it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to descend with flaps. I want you to give me full flaps. Right now. Yep. We're going to practice this descent with flaps here, and we're going to try to come down through this hole and kind of maneuver the airplane to descend down through it here. Well, the first effect of the flap, full flap, is what is. Yeah, you feel it kind of. We can descend, descend. with a little bit more of an angle without going too fast. And we're just going to kind of orbit in this little hole here so that we maintain our VFR cloud clearance distances from these clouds. But once again, we want to maintain 2,000 feet horizontal from these clouds. So you can see we're descending at a pretty low rate of speed, but we've got a very good vertical speed rate, right? Right. So let's just kind of turn in this little area here just to uh, come down through these clouds. Now, on a solo flight or something like that, I wouldn't want you to go flying on a day like today. Right. Um, but since you're with me, we can both kind of look for traffic here as we spin down through this cloud layer. We're going to kind of come back to the north here. Burlington traffic zero for Yankee. We're about seven and a half miles to the south, descending through 3,000, re-entering a left downwind to runway 24, full stop Burlington. All right, we're going to kind of come through this little slot here, looking for airplane Burlington traffic, traffic tower. 7316 Whiskey's at the ramp, and we're going to be taxiing for departure on uh, 24. So you're looking for the yeah, airport's just to our north there. All right, let's level off. We'll level off at 2,000 feet. All right, so I'm going to give you more of the flight controls now. Okay. We're pointing right towards the airport here. Okay. Which is on about a heading of north. So once we get to 2,000 feet, we can go ahead and just start accelerating back into a normal course here. Yeah. Okay. Should my hands be on the throttle at this time? Or? Yeah, what we'll do is once we get to 2,000 feet, we'll go ahead and fly full power. Or not full power, uh, excuse me. Cruise no, no, power, no, no, yeah, no, about no. 2300 RPM, and we can pull those flaps back up. All right, we're almost there at 2000. Um, but it's really shaky because of the... Yeah, the buffeting of those flaps, you can feel them kind of moving as they move through the air. At 2000, I'm there going go. to yeah, cruise power. And let's pull those flaps out one notch at a time. You can see when we add in power or pull flaps, it really wants to pitch the nose up a right. lot, doesn't it? You see the airspeed leading off there, so we got to really pitch it for 2,000. You can add more power in, too, as well. There 23? Yeah, 23. We're the traffic system here for Yankee. We are five and a half miles to the south, level 2,000. We'll be entering the left down one, number 2 4 one five four last three flat. Zulu. Yep, Wind last variable flat. at zero five. Pitch for two thousand. Visibility one zero. Sky condition few two thousand. Temperature two niner Celsius. Two point two three Celsius. Altimeter two niner niner two. Remarks. Density.
the altitude so to 2,500. That's good. Don't have to set that again. Burlington, Is Alabama, the airport regional in front of us? airport, That's right. front Burlington, of us, yeah. North Carolina. Automated weather observation 1543. Zulu. Wind variable at 05. Well, variable, huh? Yeah, it's variable again at 5 knots, so we're going to land on runway 24 where we took okay. off from. I like that. All right, so we are set up to enter the traffic pattern once again. Remember, the pattern's got those five legs we need to be familiar with. It's got upwind, crosswind, downwind, base, and final. We always want to try to enter on downwind, and that's opposite the direction we're about to land. Correct. Once again, the reason being, we can see the whole airport environment right now, so we can see any airplanes taxiing or on the runway or about to take off. I actually see one on the taxiway pulling up to runway 24, so we know that we're going to have one airborne here shortly. And we're looking in the rest of the pattern to make sure there's any other airplanes up here. We know where they're at. All right. And we make a couple of radio calls as we come in to let people know where we're at. All right. So like the traffic says uh, 500 for Yankee. We're three miles south of the field, 2,000. We're going to be entering a left downwind, runway 24, full stop, rolling the traffic. So essentially, I'll let them know how far, what altitude, right. where we're coming from, and what we plan on doing. So we can kind of enter a 45, like an on-ramp for the left downwind for runway 24 here. So let's do a right turn to about, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe right around there. And let's pull that the power back to descend down to pattern altitude of 1,600 feet. 1,600 feet puts us 1,000 feet above the ground here in Burlington. And that's where we want to fly most of our traffic patterns at. So 1,600 for the RPM? Uh, 1,600 feet for, in elevation for, on the altitude. How about the power? Uh, about 15. We're 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 yeah. okay. Turkey 7, 3, 1, 6, Whiskey. We're entering the Once again, looking through the whole pattern here, collision avoidance. I don't see uh, any other airplanes. I see one taking off. Traffic. So he's taxiing out for departure right now, and I just heard him make his radio call. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's very small to see. It is. It's kind of difficult. You'll, yeah, you'll understand to where to yeah, start looking, yeah, though. Yeah. All right, so we want to fly about a mile, uh, a half a mile from the runway on this downwind leg. So let's go ahead and start turning to parallel the runway parallel. here. And there's 1,600 feet. So give me to the bottom of the green arc on the RPM. And we're going to hold at 1,600 feet. You're going to be pitched slightly higher than you normally are in level flight at, at 2,000 RPM. All right, we're just flying us parallel to the runway here. Parallel to Burlington traffic here for Yankees on left downwind, runway 24, full stop, Burlington traffic. All right, once we get a beam on our landing point, we're going to set the airplane up for landing. Right. So that includes power to 1,500 RPM. Right now? Yep, right. and flaps to the first notch as we slow down. That's right. All right, we need to let the airplane start its descent down towards the runway or else we're going to end up too high, so we just let the nose slightly fall below the horizon, right. and we're pitching right around 80 knots or 80 so. 80 knots, okay. Yeah. Looking good. All right, once that runway gets about 45 degrees. degrees behind us, yep, we're going to make a left turn onto base leg. Uh, okay. Yeah, so let's go ahead and make that left turn. A little bit less descent. Pitch that nose up just a little bit for me. There we go. Burlington so traffic through for Yankees on left base, runway 24, full stop, Burlington traffic. Okay, so at this vantage point, we can see the runway. Yeah. It's clear now. We can see down, or final here, it's clear. Let's add let's another knot to flap. Yeah. Yep, and let's continue that descent. This time we're slowing it down to about 70 or so. All right, so we're not going to make that turn yet. A lot of people will turn a little too early and make it shallow. We want to turn right. when we get lined up. Let's go ahead and start turning now. Okay, so let's turn. All right, from here we need to gauge what to do with the power and airspeed here. Yes. So let's add in that last notch of flaps. It's a little fast, so let's pull some power out. There we go. Let that nose point for that 2-4 on the runway there. Okay. Yeah. 1,500 or the Yeah, power. right there where you got it is perfect. Yeah. 1,200, okay. Yeah, if we're high, the power can die. That's my little saying there. Okay. Yeah. All right, this is looking good. Okay. As we get back down to where we're on our glide path, you can bring the power back to about 1,500, but it looks like... Yeah, there you go. That's looking great. All right, line yourself up with the whole runway. Okay. Imagine it's only as wide as that center strip there. Right. But try to try to look down the whole runway. Don't yes. look at one point. Yeah. Okay, we're transitioning above the runway here, so let's pull the power to idle. All right, I want you to hold level right where we're at. 
Now, as it slows down, we're like transitioning into slow flight, right? Right. So we hold it up. All right, the wheels are on the ground. And now the nose wheel's on the ground. All right. All right. We're going to let the airplane kind of coast right here. Just letting it roll forward. And as we get to taxiway echo here, let's slowly start to apply the brakes. We don't want to turn too fast in the airplanes because these tires are really small. Right. And we're creating lift still as we're moving. So right. we don't have as much traction. All right, we'll turn off here at Echo. Man, that was an awesome landing. Yes, it was pleasant. It felt very smooth. All right, man, we'll come all the way across the hold short uh, line here to get clear of the runway environment, and we'll uh, point the nose slightly to the left to uh, take us back to Elon. Once we get across our tail and everything, let's bring it to a stop. Yeah, this is perfect right here. Uh, and let's pull out that after landing checklist. Okay. Burlington traffic, so it's not 500 for Yankee. It's clear of runway 24. We'll be taxiing Alpha to uh, Elon Burlington. Here we go here. Flaps are up. That's correct. Mixture lean for taxi, so a quarter of an About a good, in, about inch. Inch, out. a good inch. Yep. Five centimeters. Uh-huh. And then uh, trim set for takeoff. That's uh, correct. I'm going to go ahead and idle it up a little bit too, just to help it cool off a little better. Takeoff, yeah. Yep. And then a strobo land landing's off. The land and strobo, the blue one, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, and then we can go to a taxi now. We can taxi. All right. And I've announced to the traffic area that we're uh, taxiing back to Elon Aviation. We're on taxiway Alpha right now, so taxiways are named like in the alpha, uh, phonetic alphabet probably that you might be familiar with from the right. military. Yes. Um, well, we can always tell what they are from the little signs that they position out here. Some airports don't have signs though, so you just kind of have to let people know the, to the best of your ability what you're doing. Right. That Burlington does. We also have direction signs. For instance, this sign that says apron. It just directs airplanes that haven't been to this airport before to the main ramp, basically, or okay. apron. That's a good speed right now. Yeah, we can go a little bit slower than this. Oh, okay, yeah, because yeah, I said oh. bit. Yeah, it's a little, a little, fast, little yeah. rushed, yeah. It should feel slower than it's... Than, right, and yeah, comfortable, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Right. And I would rather you taxi slow than fast. Right. People that taxi fast, that's just a bad habit. You know, if they go out on a gusty day or something like that, uh -huh. they could cause some serious issues. There was a lot of um, lot on the menu today. It sure was. I, yeah. I look forward. Um, oh, yeah, that video is going to be cool, man. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it, just the audio last time was yeah. was so um, yeah it was just very uh, very helpful. Good man, I'm glad glad to hear it. But, uh, yeah. All right, we're going to turn the next right here. Let's try to get on that center line a little bit better. Once we get onto this next taxiway, it doesn't have a center line, so just try to put it in the center, center of the taxiway, yeah, yeah. yeah. And be real careful coming down the hill. Right, we have an airplane in front of us, yeah. Yeah, so he's he's turned off and facing this way. What we're going to do, I'm going to check the schedule here and make sure, see what flight's coming up next. Okay. This one flies again at 1 o'clock. But what we'll do is um, we'll back it actually into the hangar. Well, I'd say that. They probably put the archer in there, so. We'll put it along the grass over here. So we're going downhill so I can idle all the way. Uh, That's correct, yeah. And I'm actually going to take the flight controls now. Sure. And uh, put us next to the grass over here. I've got them. Hi, ma'am. You want to go ahead and take that checklist yes. out and do the shutdown? All right. It's the yellow, it's uh, shut down, electrical equipment off. Uh, Basically everything but the beacon. Okay. Yep. Yes. 
see if you had anything else on it can come off. All right, avionics off. Here we go. And the keys, I guess, it's in there, right? The keys in the ignition, Control. yeah, you can go ahead and pull it out and give it to me. So that goes all the way to off? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what I should have turned off, no? Off and out, yeah. Was it the first one? No, no, you turn the engine off with this. Yeah. Then you turn the, you'll, after okay. the propeller stops, you can pull the uh, key But out. it's not, it's not on the list to, to remove the keys, it's not. Uh, it should be um, ignition switch off, and then there you can pull that. Off key. and pull out, okay. Yeah. Control wheel lock. Uh, 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 fuel selector right, right, left. I'm gonna put it on the left, and then uh, hub stack record. You're doing that. Yes, sir. Throttle lock. I'm putting it on now. You're doing okay. Yeah. Door is locked. Well, unlock, I guess. Peter so. tube cover. We don't it's have it. Today, isn't it? Yeah, it's. A